space, the medical frontier. We'll introduce you to a doctor who works with the astronauts, and you'll discover how research in space helps us here on Earth. You'll meet some older adults who believe that pumping iron isn't only for the young of body, but also for the young at heart. Stress eating can be hazardous to your weight. Dr. Susan Mitchell has two simple solutions to help conquer the munchies. Intimidation on the playground, teasing in the halls, it happens to our children all too often. In our parenting segment, Elisa Streeter tells us how to bully proof your kids. And our Hooked on Health kids are having safe fun in the sun. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Maggs. And I'm Carol Sheenice. Welcome to Everybody's Hooked on Health. We're here at the Golden Bear Golf Center in Latham, New York. This large enclosed dome is one of the largest in the world, and it is the perfect place to practice your golf swing all year round. And we can't wait to see your golf swing, Tim. <laughs> You're probably wondering why we're doing a health show. Do you remember that saying from UB Blake, if I had known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself? She was surprised by what she found. I get a lot of questions about cosmetic problems on a date. information, motivation, and the tips on what it takes. We're going to share stories with you that are personal, inspiring, practical, and downright fun. So let's get started. Tim, do you remember when you were a child, the dreams you had for when you were going to grow up? What did you want to be? Well, yeah, I wanted to help people. I always wanted to help people, and I think becoming a doctor allowed me to answer my dreams. You know, Tim is one of those lucky people to have his dream come true. On our first story, we're going to meet Dr. Heidi DeBlanc. Her dream is to be an astronaut. And guess what? She's making her dream come true. I'm driven because I really enjoy what I do. And Heidi DeBlanc has plenty to do. She's the wife and mother to three young girls, a physician caring for critically ill patients at Albany Medical Center in upstate New York, and a visiting scientist with NASA, America's Space Agency. Clever, Roger, the clock is operating. We're underway. Heidi DeBlock grew up in the midst of the space race. She had countless questions about space and grew up wanting to be an astronomer. In fact, she earned a college degree in astrophysics before deciding she wanted to be a physician. In medical school, she got the opportunity okay. so to combine her love of space with oh, her oh, medical right. training. <clears throat> Heidi went to Houston for several weeks to work at the Johnson Space Center. She was hooked and has since become a regular visiting scientist there. The NASA stuff is something I've always wanted to do, and to be able to live one of your dreams has been a real blessing. At NASA, Dr. DeBlock and her colleagues are learning how space travel affects the human heart. Our current research um, is studying the astronauts when they come back to Earth and what happens to their blood vessels and their hearts that makes them get low blood pressure. About 20% of the shuttle Here's astronauts experience this dangerous condition as the space shuttle re-enters the atmosphere and lands. So what we're trying to get at is what is it about the astronauts who have this problem that's different? And we're learning new and different physiology from that, which is very exciting. How long do you want to keep the answer? The block says NASA research gives her added insight when treating her patients in the intensive care unit. But the space agency's connection to modern medicine doesn't stop there. Today, hospitals around the world use NASA technology, including telemetry monitoring systems, which allow medical staff to watch a patient's heart rate from a remote location. NASA came up with the idea during the Apollo days. And that's because we needed to see the astronauts' hearts, and they still are monitored when they walk in space by the physicians on the ground to make sure that everything's going along and nothing's happening to the astronaut. NASA can also take credit for developing a number of new ways to administer medications. If you sent this vial of medicine up into space, the fluid wouldn't stay at the bottom and the air wouldn't stay at the top because there's no gravity. It would look as if you had shaken it and it would be froth. So you can't send medicines up into space looking like this. To overcome the challenge, scientists develop patches that hold medication and deliver it through the skin once the patch is applied. Drug companies picked up on the idea and now market patches containing medicine to help people stop smoking or to combat motion sickness. By having to be creative, 
we benefited, especially with the patches. Ask de Block if she's satisfied using NASA technology and studying the astronauts on the ground, and the answer is no. It's no surprise this wife, mother, physician, and scientist wants her own shot at space. I'm going to just keep trying and see what happens. Dr. DeBlock says having strong family support is the reason why she's able to do so much. Carol, what do her three daughters think of their mom fulfilling her dream and going into outer space? They're very excited. They think it's real cool, but I'm not sure they have the connection between her being up in space and them being down here on Earth. NASA isn't finished learning how space affects older adults. During John Glenn's recent return to space, he was involved in medical research on osteoporosis. When we hear the word osteoporosis, we usually think about it as a woman's disease, but men are at risk as well. In fact, more than two million American men have the disease. Osteoporosis is really not a problem that picks only on women, that it does indeed show up in men and in elderly people, 30 to 40 percent of hip fractures will occur in men. Osteoporosis has restricted 47-year-old Tom Karskadon's lifestyle. I have to be careful about how much I try to lift or try to carry. Uh, my rule of thumb there is that uh, I can comfortably lift or carry a little bit more than my five-year-old son, but not quite as much as my eight-year-old son. The best line of defense, obviously, is to prevent osteoporosis. Remain physically active, because not only are you exercising your muscles, but the bones will respond physiologically by making themselves stronger in response to the exercise. Remember, it's never too late to begin. This means doing weight-bearing activities so your muscles are working against gravity to maintain bone strength. Some fun and easy examples are walking, swimming, and gardening. And remember, a diet high in calcium is important. And if you can't do that, a good calcium supplement is the next best thing. Guys, about 1,000 milligrams a day ought to do it. And if you drink alcoholic beverages, modify. And if you smoke, think about quitting. Later on Everyone's Hooked on Health, we'll take you to New York City for a first ever fashion show for women who have osteoporosis. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Mitchell. When you're stressed, do you reach for food like chocolate? Coming up on Practicalities, we're going to talk about two easy tips to help you stop stress eating. Ah. Did you know that men have a tendency to eat more when they're with a bunch of friends, say, watching sports, while women have a tendency to eat more when they're alone and lonely? In our Practicalory segment, Dr. Susan Mitchell is going to give us a few tips on how to stop stress eating. Did you know that men and women eat differently when they're stressed? For example, guys will reach for foods that are a protein-fat combination, like pizza, hot dogs, hamburgers, while women go for fat sugar combinations like cookies, cakes, pastries, and you got it, chocolate, the number one most craved food. How about you? Do you eat differently when you're stressed? How about when you're anxious, mad, or even sad? We've all been there. What foods do you reach for to calm that stress? Your favorite chocolate cookies, ice cream, but I bet you don't reach for broccoli and carrots. Oh no, not most of us. In fact, did you ever notice that the word stressed is dessert spelled backwards? I'm pretty stressed most of the time. So I think I do overeat. I eat when I'm not hungry. Junk food, ice cream, cake, candy, cookies, you name it. I wouldn't go home and eat broccoli and you know, cauliflower and probably eat ice cream and Doritos. If you find yourself reaching for food to calm your stress, here are two tips to help you stop stress eating. First, eat breakfast at the beginning of your day. Doesn't matter what time your day starts. This way, you're not starting out with your fuel tank on empty, and it cuts down the chance that you'll stress eat later on. Next, try to eat mini meals, or what I call graze, throughout the day, say every three or four hours. These mini meals help keep your blood glucose, or what you know as blood sugar, at a more even level so you don't feel the need to mass consume food when the stress kicks in. If you do start to stress eat, ask yourself, why am I eating this? 
Am I really hungry or just trying to calm down? If the answer is stress eating, go and do something else. Call a friend, walk, but get your mind off food. Remember, food and stress don't have to go hand in hand. The next time I feel an urge to eat, I'm coming out here to hit a bucket of balls. How about you? When stress kicks in, remember, think of something other than eating. Tim, I think you might want to focus on some golf lessons. Many Americans aren't exercising. Are you one of them? What does it take to get you started? This may be it. Tim, let's grab our shoes. We're going dancing. Here comes the music. Here we go. With statistics showing more and more Americans preferring the couch to exercise, then why are these women here? It makes you feel good. Physical fitness, it's fun. Getting healthy is just what they're doing, says Diane Hart, nationally certified instructor for Jackie's aerobic dance. It just keeps you healthy for your whole life, and that's what we want, health. Aerobic dance has it all. The warm-up stretches. Four, three. Weight work that builds upper body strength. Rose, wonder. And the fun of dance. There are some great benefits too. It is a weight stabilizer um, and it's, it just makes you feel healthy, makes you feel better about yourself. You have it as a habit and it helps in all your other areas of life. Your, your general happiness is improved. Six, are you convinced? Ready to make that lifestyle change? Then just do it. But as Diane suggests, do it slowly. It should be a slow, steady transition from an inactive lifestyle to an active lifestyle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boy, Carol, that looked like fun. Tim, it is a lot of fun. But remember, if you haven't exercised in a while, be sure to check with your doctor and pick something you enjoy doing. Our Hooked on Health kids are next, and they're having safe fun in the sun. Hi, I'm Melissa Streeter. Coming up in our parenting segment, Bully Proofing Your Child. How to keep them from becoming a victim of the tough kid in town. You know, it happens to many children. Intimidation in the lunchroom, teasing in the hallways. So how do you teach your children to get these bullies off their backs? In our parenting segment, Elisa Streeter has tips on how to bully-proof your child. You make a lousy mess. Kids just lay it on the line. Right there! Go! And while honesty can be refreshing, teasing can be depressing. They call me for it, and I just ignore them. Just ignore them and stick with my friends. These girls are quick learners. They know each child has something unique about them. And sometimes unhappy children may use that uniqueness to make them feel better. Child psychologist Frank Doberman says they can totally ignore teasing or they could try this approach. I love to tell kids, just turn around to them and say, boy, you must really feel very badly about yourself to have to talk about my hair. Or you must feel terrible about yourself to have to pick on my glasses. I feel badly for you. And then walk away. 25 for that kid. Teasing is one thing, but bullying is another. If someone is threatening your child's safety or intimidating your child, it may be time to step in. Ignoring a bully won't work. Ann's dad taught her when it's time to speak up. Sometimes you have to, you have to do something, and she's not afraid to speak up, and that's what she does. She talks to them, tells them, right? Tells them the way it is, and it, that works for her, and it works for us. So. In fact, here are some bully-proofing tactics to help you out. Don't cry, stay calm, don't hit back or taunt back, do stick up for yourself, do make lots of friends. And experts say the number one thing you should arm your child with is high self-esteem. Confidence will keep those bullies at bay. Finally, Dr. Doberman says, when in doubt, shout. I tell the kid to turn around to the bully and say, back off, real strongly. And if the kid doesn't back off, I tell them to say this, if you do it again, I'm going to let somebody know about it. And so knowing the facts about teasing and bullying are all just part of parenting today. So if your kids are too shy to tell you they're being picked on by a bully, here's what to look for. He doesn't want to go to school, he's missing money, or she doesn't want to ride the school bus. These are all signs your child may be a victim of a bully. And on a lighter note, our Hooked on Health kids are here to show you how to have safe fun in the sun. Hey, stay away from the sun. And schedule.
schedule outdoor activities before 10 a.m. or after 4 p.m. Plan times in the shade and enjoy games under trees or inside. Try the shadow test. If your shadow is shorter than you are, get out of the sun. <laughs> Block the sun by putting on sunscreen. <laughs> Why is it important to put sunscreen on? So you don't get burned by the sun. Where are you supposed to put it? On every part of your body. Yeah, Use a waterproof sunscreen that filters out UVB and UVA rays. Check the label for at least the number 15 sun protection factor. Put it on 30 minutes before going outdoors and reapply it every two to three hours. Cover up when outdoors. Pick light colored cotton clothes to help keep out the sun's rays. And don't forget to wear a hat. How can you tell which ones block out the UV rays? The best sunglasses are those that claim to block 99 or 100 percent. Also check for shape distortion by holding the glasses at arm length and slowly moving the lens across the straight line. If the straight edge doesn't curve or move, it's okay. Speak out for sun protection now. Remember. It's called Beauty in All Forms, a very special fashion show, and it's next on Everybody's Hooked on Health. Exercise isn't just for younger folks. I'm Dick Wood, and I'll have that in our older adult segment. Our older adult reporter, Dick Wood, found some sassy seniors who believe that pumping iron isn't just for the young, but the young at heart, too. Of course, when you're working out, you always have to warm up a little bit, and the, these pulley weights are excellent for that. Brian Gosling and Ruth McBride are part of a trend among older adults, keeping physically fit by building muscles and strengthening their bones. They work out regularly at Gold's Gym. Why do they do it? Oh, I've been working out for many years. It's just been a part of my life. I feel good. It really makes a difference. I, I feel much more vigorous. These reasons and more are why older adults are doing whole body workouts, exercising all the major muscle groups. After warming up on a bike, Ruth does her routine. I do the, what they call the circuit, where I work out every major muscle group uh, using the different machines. You know, for many, gyms offer a place to meet people, socialize, have fun, in addition to working out with all this terrific equipment. And there are health benefits. Well, it has helped my, my blood pressure, it's helped my cholesterol and triglycerides, and I did lose some weight, which it wasn't my uh, original purpose, but it's a nice little side benefit that uh, I did go from a size 10 to a size 6, which uh, I enjoy that. <laughs> Okay, what does it take to convince you to get off the couch and join your peers at a gym near you? Does this make a difference? Get out, so it's a social thing as well as a physical thing. You get out to a good gym, and there's wonderful people there, and all the different types of equipment. Overall, the health benefit, the, the um, psychological benefit to feel good and to feel able to do things, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. That's 15. This story is living proof that you're never too old. The key is you've got to keep moving and keep smiling. Tim, I'm going to smile as I move over to the clothing store. Finding attractive clothing is important for women of all ages, but for women with osteoporosis, it's difficult to find clothes that fit. Here's what the fashion industry is doing to help. More than 500 people watched as women with osteoporosis walked the runway in New York City during the Beauty in All Forms Fashion Show and Design Competition. Students from the Fashion Institute of Technology designed clothing for women ages 50 to 86. This fashion show is a collaboration between the National Osteoporosis Foundation and the Fashion Institute of Technology. 16 students participated in the program. Each student designer created two outfits based on the same shape, using different fabrics depending on the season, 
styling, and design area. There were four fashion categories, career wear, suits and dresses for work, active wear, clothing for exercising and other physical activities, casual sportswear, clothing for every day, and loungewear for the party hostess or while relaxing around the house. Beauty in all forms is truly a unique fashion show, uniting generations in the realization that the desire to remain fashionable is ageless. Until these clothes are in the stores, here are three fashion tips for women living with osteoporosis. Wear clothing which is loose, straight, or just slightly fitted. Find pants with elastic waistbands. Make good use of accessories such as long scarves or shawls to draw eyes up from the shoulder area and highlight your face. Tim, I don't know about you, but I certainly learned a lot from the tips that Lisa Streeter and Dr. Susan Mitchell gave us. And the seniors pumping iron was truly inspiring. The Hooked on Health kids, they looked like they were having a blast too. Thanks for joining us. We had a great time. Remember, they can't throw dirt on you as long as you're moving. <laughs> Please join us next time on Everybody's Hooked on Health. Bye now. Bye.